In this video, we're going to continue our work looking at finding probabilities using a standard normal distribution. All we're doing is carrying on with our work and looking at a few more examples. First one, we're asked to find the probability that z is greater than negative 2.24. So let's draw a little line and we will place that there. We are interested now in the area to the right of this line. So let's put on here negative 2.24. So this area right now, to the right of the line will give us the probability that z is greater than negative 2.24. In the last couple of videos, I've introduced the idea of symmetry, or alternatively, I like to walk around the other side and redraw it. I like to think to myself, if I was around the other side, what would I see? And the answer is the standard normal distribution. And what I'd have here is the 2.24. And the 2.24 would be just here, and that would be positive. As you can see, we've got the large area, so if I shaded that on here, we would have the large area. We know from our work before that this area can be given as phi of 2.24. Phi of 2.24 now is the area trapped under the curve to the left of that line, and that gives us a probability. That probability will be the same as the probability of z being greater than negative 2.24. So all we're looking for then in our table of values, our z table, is phi of 2.24. You might just intuitively spot that, and that's perfectly fine. The whole idea of these videos is to give you alternative ways of looking at them. If you just think, well, I know that if that's negative 2.24, and this is the large area, it's quite clearly going to be phi of 2.24. So let's find that value. Uh, so here are our tables. 2.24 is just here. So what have we got? 0 0.9875. So let's put that on. 0 0.9875. So the probability that z is greater than negative 2.24 is 0 0.9875. Okay, let's look at the next one. We're interested in the probability of z being between 0 and positive 1.42. So let's draw a line and we'll put 1.42 on. So here's going to be 1.42. We are interested now in the area to the left of the line and to the right of 0. And it's going to be this area right here. In general, what we can say is the following. We can say that the probability now of z being greater than a yet less than b can be found by doing phi of b minus phi of a. I prefer not to look at it in this way. The way I'd like to think about it now is simply to see this particular example now as the area here being 0 0.5. We know that this is symmetric about 0. We know the total area under the curve is 1. Therefore, it being less than 0 is going to give us half. So all we're going to do in this particular case is find phi of 1.42 and subtract away from that 0 0.5. If you want to find phi of 0, you will see it's 0 0.5 anyway. So let's look in our table. Phi of 1.42, so where are we? 1.42 is down here. So we've got now 0 0.9 treble 2. So what we'd have then is the following. We'd have 0 0.9 treble 2 minus for 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the area trapped under the curve to the left of 0. So we end up with 0 0.4 treble 2. So the probability that z is between 0 and 1.42 is 0 0.4 treble 2. OK, let's look at the next one. We want to find the probability that z is between 0 and negative 2.30. So let's put this on. Let's put a negative 2.30 just here. So let's place that here. So we've got negative 2.3 here. And we're interested now in this area. The way I'd like to look at this again, because we have 0, is simply taking the other side of this to be 0 0.5. And if I was around the other side of this, what I would see is the following. I would simply see now that I've got this point here, which is going to be positive 2.3, and I'm interested in this area. So all I'm going to do is phi of 2.3, and I'm going to subtract away from that 0 0.5. This will give me the area trapped under the curve to the right of negative 2.3 and to the left of 0. So let's find 2.3 in my table. And that's going to give me 9893. So what we need then, uh, what do we get? 0 
893 and I need to subtract away 0 0.5 which is going to leave me now 0 0.4893. So the probability that z is between 0 and negative 2.30 it's 0 0.4893. You certainly don't have to view it in that way. Please don't think this is the only way of doing it or the most effective or efficient way of doing it. It's just an alternative way you can look at it if you need to. Okay, let's do another one. So we want this time the probability of z being less than negative 1.63. So let's put this line up and this one's fairly straightforward from here. So all we need to do is write this on. This now is going to be negative, so negative 1.63. So we're interested in this area trapped under the curve just here. So if, again, if I was around the other side, what would I see? I would see the standard normal. I'd see this point now at 1.63. I'm interested in this area. We know that this value right here is given by phi of 1.63. So all I'm going to do now is to find this area, 1 minus phi of 1.63. So that's all we're going to do. And as we saw in the last video, if you want now phi of minus k, this is given now equal to 1 minus phi of k. So if you prefer just to go at it like that, you're more than welcome. So let's find phi of 1.63. Where's my table? 1.63 is going to give us now this value here of 9484. So let's write that down. What we'll have now is 1 minus 0 0.9, what's it, 9484. And that's going to end up giving me now, what are we going to have, 0 0.0516. That looks about right. So there we go. A few more examples done. We'll go on to some hard ones again in the next video. Hopefully that's given you some idea. And as stated, if you have your own way, please use it. Don't feel that you have to go for this approach, but it's certainly one that you can look at.